So last time we were talking about how we determine the number of effective pairs. And then from effective pairs, we got the electron pair shape. And from the electron pair shape, we looked at the number of bonding regions and got the, the molecular shape. Where did we end off last time? What was the, the shape or the number of effective pairs we looked at? Uh, two bonding pairs with one lone pair, which makes it bent. Okay. So we talked about bent structures in the trigonal planar electron pair shape. So let's, that was three effective pairs, right? Let's move up to four effective pairs. Okay. So we got four effective pairs. What is the electron pair shape going to be for four effective pairs? Tetrahedral. Yep, tetrahedral. Okay, so the first one we're going to consider is where we have four bonding pairs or four bonding domains. Could you come up with a structure of a molecule that would have four bonding domains for me? Methane. Methane, yep, so CH4, right? Okay, so the Lewis structure of that's pretty simple, right? But now we want to do a, a better three-dimensional representation. So how would you draw the 3D representation of this molecule? How many atoms are going to be in the plane of the board or in the plane of the paper? Two. Yep, so the hydrogen up here and this hydrogen. And how many are gonna be coming out towards us? One. Yep. How many going in? One. Yeah. And you remember the approximate bond angle here? 109.5. Yep. So that's important to know that it's not 90. It doesn't like, if we look at this structure, it looks like it's 90, right? It's not actually that way because we have three dimensions to spread this out. This is going to become increasingly important when we start talking about polarities and you have to think about the three dimensional shape of the molecule. Okay. Uh, what is the molecular shape in this case? Tetrahedral. Yep, it's still tetrahedral. The number of bonding domains equals the number of effective pairs. It's going to have the same molecular shape and electron pair shape. Okay, now let's go from three bonding domains or go to three bonding domains and one lone pair. Could you think of a molecule that has three bonding domains and one lone pair? Anybody have any ideas? How about ammonia? What's the formula for ammonia again? NH3. Yep. NH3. So it looks almost like methane, except we replace a carbon with a nitrogen and we have a lone pair, right? Okay. So now let's try to draw, draw that in three dimensions. Okay. So anybody know the bond angles between two of the, between any of the hydrogens? What's that bond angle going to be? Would it still be 109.5? Yep, it's going to be approximately 109.5. It changes a little bit because the lone pairs repel a bit different than these really localized bonds. So we're going to say approximately 109.5.
Okay, does anybody know what the shape of this molecule is? Trigonal pyramidal. Yep, so trigonal pyramidal. Why the pyramidal part? Well, if you, if you draw a face on all of like these points, you get something that looks like a little pyramid. All right. I have a question. Yeah. If we write just tri if we just write trigonal pyramid, is that still is that wrong or is that still right because we didn't put the AL? So it's, like if we on the exam. It's right. Um okay. pyramidal is generally what's used though. Okay. Yeah. Like I get what you mean. All right. Uh now let's look at another example. We have uh two bonding pairs and two lone pairs. Dr. Simpson, can you just mm -hmm. move the paper up? Oh, yeah, like that. I just wanted to, no, I just wanted to check the, oh, sorry, uh, down. I wanted to check the bond angle. Oh, okay. you're good? Yeah, I'm good now. Okay. Thank you. Yep, so two bonding domains and two long pairs. Could you think of any Lewis structure, any molecule that would have this bond topology? Anybody have any suggestions? Water? Yeah, water. You draw it out. It can look like this. Or in fact, some people will draw water that way. Are either of these two Lewis structures wrong? No, they're both correct. Which one is a bit better to describe the, the three-dimensional shape, the top one or the bottom one? The top one. Yeah, the top one. This makes it look like, what's it make it look like the bond angle is between those two hydrogens? 180. 180. Yeah, it's 180, but what do we know it actually is approximately? Around 120? No, not around 120. Should be around 109.5. It might be, it, it probably is bigger. Um, but actually I can calculate that. We can check that really quick. Oh, I'm gonna adjust the hydrogens. Sorry, I'm staring at it over here. We'll see. Bond angle according to my molecular mechanics calculation is 104.5. So, all right. So it actually, goes down a little bit. That's because the lone pairs, they, they tend to be less localized and they repel stuff down, or repel bonds down. Does anybody know the name of this molecular shape? It's bent. Yep, this one's bent. So we see another bent back in there. Okay. Everybody feel okay with four effective pairs? So it's bent even though it looks linear? Yes, this is a crappy Lewis structure, basically. So okay. this isn't the three-dimensional shape. This is actually the 3D shape. Oh, 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 okay. Okay. So the bottom one is like the just like the regular 2D Lewis structure, correct? Yes, exactly. The, okay, okay. So what it what it is is I'm actually gonna share my screen with you. So if we were to draw it, this would be like the top structure. Let me zoom in a little bit more. So this would be an example of the top structure where we're looking at it that way. This would be an example of the bottom structure in the way we're trying to represent it. On paper, it looks like this bond angle is 180, but in reality, we're just looking at it from a different view. Does that make sense? Okay. So we're gonna, on our exam, because it's on paper, like it's on paper, it's going to look like it's a 180, but in reality it's only 109. Right, 
So what I want you to do is, is I want you to, to be able to translate from those like flat two dimensional pictures to like these, these three dimensional images. And it takes a lot of skill to do that. Um, and I want you to be able to like rotate them in your head, basically. So, all right. Any other questions? Okay, we'll get this to focus again. So we're done with four effective pairs. Let's move on to five effective pairs. Okay. Uh, what's going to be the electron pair shape for five effective pairs? Trigonal pyramidal. Yep. So trigonal pyramidal, just like our example earlier today. Uh, let's look at five bonding domains. Would it be trigonal pyramidal or trigonal bipyramidal? Oh, bipyramidal, I'm sorry. Geez, I've done that twice today already. Thank you for calling me on my stuff. <laughs> yes, the bipyramidal comes from basically slapping two trigonal pyramidal structures together. So an example of this, we could use the, the daily problem that we had earlier today. Another one I would like to use is PCL5, because it gives us a little more practice with Lewis structures. How many valence electrons does the phosphorus have? Five. Yep. Chlorines? Seven. Yep. Total of 40, right? Okay, which one's the central atom? Phosphorus. Yep. And this structure will limit the amount of formal charge. So that's our Lewis structure. But we want to try and represent this in three dimensions, right? So let's try and push it to 3D. How many of the chlorines are going to be in the plane of the paper? Three. Yep, we can put three there. And then we have one coming out, one going back in. And you guys already told me a bunch of these angles. I'm just gonna ask you one of them. Uh, what is this bond angle? 120. Yep. Okay. Molecular shape then. What's its molecular shape going to be? Trigonal bipyramidal. Yep. Hey, and I remember the bi this time, so we're good. Okay. So now we got five bonding pairs. Let's go to a situation where we have four bonding domains, one lone pair. Okay, a molecule that has this type of geometry is SF4. What's the name of that compound? Sulfur tetrafluoride. Yep. Remember, naming is going to be on the final, so start reviewing if you forgot it. Okay. All right. Sulfur, six electrons. The fluorines, we said were seven apiece. What's that total? 34. Yep. Which one's the central atom again? Sulfur. Yep, sulfur. So if we go to draw this out, okay, I'm missing two electrons. Where am I going to toss those two electrons? On top of sulfur. Why the sulfur? It already had eight valence electrons around it. Because it's in the third row and the third row doesn't necessarily have to have, you can have more than eight. Right, we have that expanded octet. The other thing is too, is this cuts down on the formal charge. OK, 
Okay, let's try to draw this in a three-dimensional structure. Now, what ends up happening is, is if, if we look back at our uh, phosphorus pentachloride, it's almost the same thing. We have two options. We can either take a chlorine from an axial position, or we could take a chlorine from an equatorial position. Which one would you, would reduce the overall energy of the system? Taking an atom away from the axial or from the equatorial? What do you think? Axial. Axial. Axial has contact with, let's draw it, with one, two, like three, it has three nearest neighbors, right? How many neighbors does an equatorial one have? Uh, two. Those two, and actually thinking in 3D, these are somewhat close to. Sorry, purple and, can you tell the difference between the purple and the red? So this guy has four neighbors. This guy only has three neighbors. So which one do you think we're gonna pull from? Axial or equatorial? Equatorial. Yeah, we're gonna pull from equatorial. So we gotta to try to draw that. So how many, how many fluorines are going to be in the plane now? Two. Two, yep. And those are the, the axial ones, right? We have a lone pair that's also in that plane. And then we have two fluorines that come out. Or one that goes out, one that goes back in, I'm sorry. Anybody know what this molecular shape is called? Seesaw? Yep, seesaw. The reason for that is, is if you, like you have a model of this and you flip it on its side, like that, it's like a little seesaw. You have people sitting on the edges and it teeters back and forth. And it's the most fun geometry to say. Any questions? Okay, let's keep going then. Oh Three wait, I do have a question, I lied. Sure. Okay, so um, so since we're working on effective pairs of five, will mm -hmm. the EPS always be trigonal bipyramidal even though there's four bonding domains so it wouldn't be tetrahedral? Yes. How so would you? The EPS, so how would, go ahead. Talking about regions of electron density. So like if you, if you looked at the density, the electron density, what would, it, what would the molecule look like? Or what would, what would that shape look like? Whereas the molecular shape just considers only the bonding domains. Okay. So it's like, um, like the electron density is really fuzzy, right? Right. We're just looking at that fuzzy nature. How would it look? So like, do you wear glasses by any chance? I do. Okay. I do. So if you, you stand far away and you try and look at a stop sign, right, without your glasses, it looks really fuzzy and kind of dispersed. Then you toss your glasses mm -hmm. on and then you can see like the clear outline of STOP, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of the same thing here. The electron pair shape is, is like an un, is looking at the unfocused electron density where the molecular shape is looking at more focused electron density. Okay. Does that make so, sense? Yes. And then so that leads me to another question. So mm -hmm. for, so if we, on the exam, is, are we going to be give, like told what the EPS is from the beginning? Are we going to have to know both depending on how many bonding domains and the lone pairs? You're going to have to know both. Okay. Okay? Yes. But you are correct. The electron pair shape for all of these guys always is trigonal bipyramidal. Okay? Sounds good. Yes. All right. So now let's look at another example. We were on three bonding domains, two lone pairs. 
the shape that we can do is ClF3, or the molecule we can look at. We draw that out. That's the structure we get. Okay, let's try to represent this in three dimensions. Okay, so let's look at our, our previous example for a second. And we have to consider where are we gonna pull off an atom? Are we gonna pull it off from the axial or the equatorial position? Equatorial? Yep, we're going to pull off another one from this spot. So if we do that, we can actually draw this structure in three dimensions. We can get all of the fluorines in the same plane. We can get the lone pairs going in and out of the board. Anybody know what the molecular shape of this system is? Given it's flat, I'm going to turn it this way. What letter of the alphabet does that kind of look like? T. Yep, T. So the name of this shape, T-shaped. OK. Next. We're going to do two bonding pair or bonding domains. Could you actually go back for a second? Oh yeah, I'm sorry. You're good. Um, this may be a stupid question, but um, when I, I just had a question about when you're drawing the like angles or, or the, the angled structure, um, when you draw the little wedge shaped bond, I noticed that sometimes you shade it in and sometimes you don't. Is there like a specific? No, I'm just being lazy. Or... Oh, okay, okay, I was just wondering. So yeah, sometimes I'll do that. It's just if I feel like I want to color it in or not. Okay, so yeah, so just it, it basically doesn't matter whether we do or not. I just right, and actually, uh, it doesn't really matter if you say the wedged is the one coming out or going in or if the dashed is the one going out, coming in, it's really completely your preference. Okay. okay. Does that make sense? Thank you. Okay. Notice when, you're, you. when you do like the 3D structure, you put like little like bond dashes with the lone pairs. Mm -hmm. That's something you do when, when it comes to 3D? Uh, it can help you. You don't necessarily have to do it. Okay. Like I, just... I, could, I could have just drawn it that way. Okay. And that would be fine. But oh. you, you might have questions about the bond angles or like uh, eventually we're going to talk about polarity and if it's, and in that case, you really need to know that three-dimensional shape and those bond angles. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Um, should, should we go over the bond angles for the last two ones we did? You don't have to know the exact numbers, but just have an idea of the, like, the shapes between them. So I'm not going to ask you a question about like, what is this bond angle? Okay. All right, so we got two bonding domains and three lone pairs. Let's look at I3 minus that anion. If we go to draw that one out, that's the structure I, I can draw, but what am I missing? Formal charge. Mm -hmm. Which of the iodines needs a formal charge? The middle one should have a negative. Yep, the middle one should have a negative one charge. Okay, let's try to draw the three-dimensional shape of this guy. Going back to this point, where am I going to pull an atom from the axial or the equatorial position? 
Equatorial? Yep, still gonna keep pulling from that equatorial. So actually what we've drawn is a completely fine structure. Because what is this bond angle between these, these two iodines going to be? 180. 180. Yep. 180. Okay, we've seen 180 a handful of other times. So this is a repeat molecular shape name. What is the molecular shape of this system? Linear. Yep, linear. Okay. All right, on to the last one, six effective pairs. What is the electron pair shape for six effective pairs? Octahedral. Yep. An octahedral has a variety of different spots you can pull, pull atoms off of. First one, we're gonna consider six bonding domains. You can already tell me before even looking at the structure, what is the molecular shape? Octahedral. Yep. Okay, an example of this, what's the name of that compound? Sulfur hexafluoride. Yep, sulfur hexafluoride. Let's draw it out real quick. Dots everywhere. Okay. But now we want to try to draw a three-dimensional representation of this guy. Right? So let me pull up the three-dimensional model. I'm going to share my screen with you. There we go, we have, we have this shape. How many, how many of the fluorine atoms do you want in the plane of the paper? There, there are a couple different answers you can have here. So how many do you guys wanna have in the plane of the paper? Two. Okay, two. And where are those, are they axial or are they equatorial? Axial? Yeah. Okay, so. We're going to try and draw it in this way. We're going to have two coming out, two going in. So sulfur, F, F. Now I'm self-conscious about my, my wedge bonds. I got to color them in now. There we go. Sure. And that's the structure we get. Okay, so does it matter if you have so if you had like the ones going out, does it matter what side they're on? Like, do they have to be equal, or can you have like two going out on the same side and two coming in? No, because if you look at like this three dimensional structure, you would have to have on opposite sides. Does that make sense? Yes. All right, so you can tell me the bond angle between two, any two adjacent fluorines. So what I mean by adjacent, close. What is this bond angle? Ninety. Yep. Perfect. Okay, we're gonna do two more of these and then we'll be done. So now we got Five bonding domains. And one lone pair. Okay. Doesn't really matter where we take the atom from this system because they're all equivalent. They're all 90 degrees away from one another. An example of this is IF4, or IF5, excuse me. So we go to draw that out.
a million dots. I got to pick something other than things with fluorine in them. And that's the structure we get. Now I'm going to jump back to the model and we're going to show what that looks like when we start removing an atom. Okay, so we're going to pluck off any one of these. Which one do you want to take off? Axial, equatorial, what do you prefer? Axial. Okay, so we'll cut that, oops, cut that guy off. Now we're going to try to draw this structure the way it is. We're going to have one uh, fluorine in the plane, two coming out, two going in. So kind of going to flip the structure we have right now. And we could put a lone pair down there like that if we want to. Does anybody know what this molecular shape is? Is it square pyramidal? Yes. Square pyramidal. Where does the square come from? Well, If you connect these points, looks like a little square. Okay, last one, and then we're, we're done with the molecular shapes that you need to know. Okay, last one. We have four bonding domains and two lone pairs. So let's look at xenon tetrafluoride. So in that case, we go to draw this guy out. And that's the structure we get. Okay. Let's jump back to our model and let's decide where are we going to pull off an atom. So here's our model. Where would you suggest to pull off an atom? Axial or equatorial? Axial? Why, why would you go with an axial? Uh, it has four connections and the equator, like if you take something off of an equatorial, it would just kind of mess up the, um, I don't know, the interactions with the other three. Yeah, exactly. So this guy, this fluorine right here really only has two nearest neighbors, right? And then this guy has four nearest neighbors. The other thing I think you were trying to describe is, is you break a lot of symmetry when you and nature really likes to have symmetry in things. It's kind of weird. Like we think, when we think of something that's beautiful or you look at the most beautiful faces or people who have like the most symmetric faces, right? You think about like geometric shapes and such and things that are symmetrical tend to look prettier in some cases. And you can find spots in nature where symmetry is preferred. So we're gonna knock that one off, oops. Maybe, I'm gonna do it. All right, we'll use this tool, bam. That one's gone. Okay, what do you know about the shape of this molecule now? It's a square. Yeah, it's a square. So we're gonna get, so the molecular shape is going to have the name square in it. What about, the number of dimensions we could use to express this structure. How many do we really need? Four. Nope, not four. Two. Two. What do we know about any structure that is 2D or flat? What's, what was that other 
other term we use to describe them? Planar. Planar. So what do you think the name of this compound is? Square planar? Yep, square planar. So we got square planar. Okay. So you need to know all of those structures. You need to know how to name them and you need a good idea of their three dimensional representation. Unfortunately, we didn't have enough time to cover polarity. So I'm going to make another video that I would like you to watch at some point about polarity. Uh, this, this is a very important topic that needs to be um, discussed in this course because you need it for next semester. So I'm gonna post that video online and I'll send that out to you guys. Are there any questions about the material we covered today?